Hi, I'm Chris, obviously, and I'm recording this especially to go with my book. So I hope it helps clarify one of the really important bits at the beginning of the book. So I want to tell you about four failed holidays that I've had. I'm not very good at holidays for various reasons. And I want to tell you about four of these. And the point of this story will become clear, so bear with. So the first holiday is where we have a terrible journey, but it's great when we arrive. Now, you might say that's actually not a failed holiday because the journey's probably a day, and then we have two weeks of fantastic holiday when we get there. But I'm gonna be arguing later on that that is actually a failed holiday. And I think that's actually a very common type of holiday, isn't it? The journey's almost always terrible. Now, the next type of holiday is the reverse of that. This is where the journey is okay, but we're disappointed in the destination. I don't know if you've had holidays like that. I certainly have. I won't name countries here, but I have had places where I've been and it's just not been what they said in the brochure. So that can happen, but never mind. There's always another holiday next year, so it's not the end of the world. Now, the third type of holiday is where it's very well planned and it goes exactly to plan, but for some reason, it's not fun. So it's well planned, it's efficient, but not fun. I can't help doing these kinds of holidays because I'm a project manager. So I have everything really well organized and everything goes to plan. And when we get back home, I sort of think, yeah, but was it really a holiday? It was more like a sort of military operation. So that's kind of a failed holiday, or is it? And then the final type of holiday, which I don't often do, but I know other people do, is where you drive at random. You just get in your car and you just go somewhere like Italy where you can't really go wrong. And you just take whichever turning you fancy. Maybe you don't even have a map. Maybe you're not even booked in to hotels. You just sort of go wherever the fancy takes you. I wish I could do that. So that's the fourth type of holiday. Now, of course, holidays don't matter that much. What we're really talking about here is approaches to life, approaches to how you use your time. So this last one, I'll do these in reverse order. This last one I'm gonna call the band. Because I first became aware of this as an approach to life when I was in the very first band I was in when I was about 20. I was working for Westland Helicopters down in Somerset. And I answered an advert and I ended up playing the saxophone in this heavy rock band. It was kind of white snake with saxophone added. And it, I'd come from university and was very sort of organized, revising for my exams and all of this. And the other people in the band were from another planet and they were all sort of smoking various things and they were totally disorganized. And I remember sort of looking down on them thinking, how can they live their lives like this? And their cars were breaking down and they'd always forgotten when the next gig was and all that sort of thing. But I realized after a while that actually they had much more fun than me. And I remember thinking, maybe they've got life sussed and I haven't. So the big question really is how important is fun in all of this? And I think that could be quite important. But of course, although they had lots of fun, the price they paid was they didn't achieve very much because they never got their act together. And I remember thinking, you know, why don't they have some systems and write things down and have checklists and stuff like that? But did it worry them that they didn't achieve very much? And the answer may surprise you because the answer is yes, it did worry them because they had goals. They wanted to be on, it was the old Grey Whistle test back then, it'd be Jules Holland now. So they wanted the band to be successful, but we never even got our act together to record an album because they were too busy just sort of messing around. And given the choice of practicing or partying, they would always go for partying. And recording in the studio was just too much effort to get the money and the time together to do it. And that bugged them. And it, it, they were quite upset really that the band wasn't famous. And I remember thinking, well, I'm not surprised. And I thought I was superior to them because this was me. 
I was Mr. Efficient. And I remember thinking, ah, oh, well, yes, but I'm organised. But then I realised that actually I wasn't achieving any more than them. I was in the same band and I wasn't even having fun like they were. So you might think that number three, option number three is time management, well-planned, efficient. But actually, is it? Because I think fun is important. We'll cover that later on in the book. So I suddenly realised that I was just being well planned and efficient was just going around in a circle very efficiently and it wasn't really getting me anywhere. I was like the greyhound, which I described later on in the book, who efficiently and fast goes round, but only round a circular track. And what's the point of that? So I had a sort of sudden epiphany, really, and this was me part two. And I realised that you've got to have some goals in life. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have some things that you want to achieve. So I wrote a list of goals and, uh, and suddenly there I was as a manager. And you could call that a kind of success, I suppose. Except that although the journey was quite easy up the management tree, I played the game, I could see how to do that. I was disappointed in the destination. And I spent 10 years climbing up the management tree and then I was able to look over the wall and see that I put my ladder up against the wrong wall and that management wasn't going to make me happy. Now, with a holiday, you can be disappointed. It doesn't matter. There's always another holiday next year. But with life, we probably only get one shot. And we do have to be careful that we don't spend ages working on some sort of plan like being a director or something of a company and then being disappointed in that destination. So it's important to think really carefully about what the destination is and will it make us happy and will it give us a sense of achievement? So that was me part two. This last one isn't me, this was my friend Mark at university. And we, we met uh, at college, he was doing economics, I was doing engineering. Turned out that financially economics was a much better option and he ended up as managing director of a merchant bank, very rich and successful, really good guy. But the interesting thing was that when I went to visit him, I said to him, how's work? And he said, oh, he said, I, I, don't, I don't really want to talk about work. And I said, oh, not fun then. And he said, fun? It's not supposed to be fun, Chris. I'm running a merchant bank. And I said, yeah, but if it's not fun and you're spending six days a week doing it, because he used to work really hard, is that sensible? You know, you, you get home late every night, you're tired, you get home and you just slump in front of the telly. And you're working weekends, you have to do a lot of foreign trips. I know it's well paid, but is it worth it if you don't enjoy it? And he said, oh, yes, yes, it is, because I've got a plan. And my plan is to retire early. And I remember thinking, is that a good plan? You know, because the thing is, the reason why I've called it terrible journey great when you arrive is that life is really the journey, isn't it? Life is a journey. And what is arrival? And it's sort of retirement, possibly death. But most of life is the journey and you've got to enjoy it. And if Mark is always just thinking, well, it'll be OK one day when I retire, he's wishing his life away. And however great his retirement is, is it worth 30 or 40 years of not seeing his kids and doing a really stressful, horrible job working really long hours. I just don't think it's worth that price. And will he have a great, happy, long retirement anyway? Because a lot of people, especially the ones who work really hard, retire and then they keel over within a few years because they don't have a reason to live anymore and the stress catches up with them. So this idea of a terrible journey through life, great when you arrive, doesn't seem very sensible to me. I think it's probably fine for a holiday, but as a life philosophy, it's not very sensible. So this one doesn't really work. This one you've got to be very careful with. This one is not very sensible. And I end up thinking, well, you know, maybe driving at random through life and having as much fun as you can might be a good idea. But that seems like a bit of a cop out, doesn't it? So I think in the end, what, what I'm getting from this is that best use of time is a combination of enjoying yourself as much as you can, which is what the band did, and achieving as much as you can, which is what Mark was doing and which I sort of realised. But you have to work out what achievement you want to go for. And if you could maximise the enjoyment and the achievement, then you've cracked it. And... I don't think there's anything more to this than enjoyment and achievement. 
because enjoyment is to do with the present and achievement is to do with the future. The past is gone, you can't do anything about the past. So we've just got to maximise those two. And I don't think there is a conflict between the two of them. Obviously, the band were doing only enjoyment and they sort of didn't achieve anything and that was a problem. Mark was doing only achievement and forgetting to enjoy it. But it absolutely is possible to do both. And I think if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're more likely to achieve great results, actually. And if you're achieving stuff, then that should give you enjoyment. So I think you absolutely can do both. And really, that's what my book is about. How can we do both? And just a final thing on this video is to say that some people's plan is to enjoy at home and achieve at work. But that's not enough. I think what we should do is enjoy home and work because you don't want to be hating five days a week, do you? And I also think, why not achieve not only in your work, but at home as well? By home, I mean everything outside of work. So I think the meaning of life, really, is to enjoy home and work and to achieve at home and work. And if you can do that little four by four and do all of those, you've really cracked it. And you know, the band were enjoying themselves at home, but that was it. They didn't enjoy their work and they achieved nothing. And Mark is achieving at work, which is great, but he's not achieving anything at home. He never is at home. And when he is, he's exhausted and he's not enjoying anything. So he's doing one out of four as well. And one out of four is definitely not enough. Even two out of four, I don't think is enough. We want to get four out of four. And that's what my time management book is all about. So hope you enjoy it. Thanks again for buying the book. And that is my explanation of where we're going to go.